The overall goal of this procedure is to isolate and culture adult epithelial stem cells from human skin. This is accomplished by first cutting fresh human skin from facelift or other surgery into one centimeter wide strips and incubating in media containing dispase. The skin is then rinsed in fresh media and the hair follicles are plucked. Next, follicles are separated into telogen and antigen follicles by examining them under a dissecting microscope. The final step of the procedure is trypsinizing follicles into single cell suspension and plating in culture dishes. Ultimately, results can be obtained that show clonogenic cell growth through phase contrast microscopy. Visual demonstration of this method is critical as the cutting, plucking, and identification steps are difficult to learn because few people are familiar with the microscopic assisted dissection of skin and hair follicles. To begin extraction of epithelial stem cells from human skin, cut fresh human scalp skin into 1 cm wide strips, cut parallel to hair growth so as not to cut across follicles. Add the skin to a conical tube with DMEM containing 10% FBS and 4 mg per milliliter dispase. Incubate the sample for 2-4 hours at 37 degrees Celsius. After the incubation, rinse skin with fresh DMEM containing 10% FBS and place in a sterile petri dish. Collect the follicles by gently pulling each hair firmly and smoothly from the base with forceps. Place isolated hair follicles in fresh media. Next, use a dissecting microscope to select follicles at telogen stage based on their morphology. Cut out the bulge region and transfer follicles into a 15 milliliter sterilized tube. Additionally, antigen follicles can be used. Cut the upper one-third of follicles to obtain the hair follicle bulge region of stem cells or cut the bulb region to isolate matrix transit amplifying cells and add to the collection tube. Then, add 4 milliliters of a 1 to 1 solution of 0.05% trypsin EDTA and 0.53 millimolar tetrasodium EDTA for 15 to 20 minutes at room temperature. Shake the tube periodically to mix. Detached cells can be visualized under a dissecting scope to monitor progress of digestion. To stop the digestion, add 4 milliliters of DMEM plus FBS and centrifuge for 5 minutes at 800 RPM. Discard the supernatant, carefully saving approximately 0.2 to 0.5 milliliters to avoid losing cells, and resuspend in 1 milliliter of keratinocyte medium without EGF. Before plating the epithelial stem cells for culture, a 6-well plate of mitomycin C-treated 3T3 J2 feeder cells should be prepared according to the written protocol. Then, see the isolated hair follicle stem cells. Incubate the cells overnight in a humidified incubator at 37 degrees Celsius, 5% carbon dioxide. The following day, the media is changed to keratinocyte medium with epidermal growth factor and return to the incubator. Feed the cells every two days with keratinocyte medium plus EGF and grow them for 14 to 20 days. To passage the stem cells, the feeder cells must be removed first. Wash the cells once with PBS and add enough room temperature 0.53 millimolar tetrasodium EDTA to cover the cells. Incubate the cells at room temperature for five minutes. After the incubation, Gently shake the dish and the 3T3 J2 feeder cells will detach. Aspirate off the feeder cells. Rinse the plate of stem cells with PBS once and add enough pre-warmed 37 degrees Celsius 2X trypsin EDTA to each well to cover the cells. Incubate at 37 degrees Celsius for 7 to 15 minutes to allow the hair follicle stem cells to fully detach. After the cells have detached, Add approximately 500 microliters of keratinocyte medium without EGF to stop the trypsin and gently pipette up and down to disperse the cells. Collect the cells in a conical tube and centrifuge at 200 G for 5 minutes. Aspirate the supernatant and resuspend the cells in keratinocyte medium without EGF. 
Finally, count and replate the cells onto a mitomycin C treated 3T3 J2 cell layer. To immortalize the stem cells, plate 350,000 stem cells per well of a 6 well plate onto a layer of mitomycin C treated 3T3 J2 feeder cells. Culture the cells for two days. On the second day, treat PA317 LXSN 16E6 E7 cells, which encode HPV16, E6, and E7 with mitomycin C for two hours as described in the written protocol. After the incubation, add the treated cells to the primary epithelial stem cells, leaving one well of stem cells untreated as a selection control. Co-culture for six days in keratinocyte medium with EGF, changing the media every two days. After six days, remove the feeder and PA317 cells by treating with 0.53 millimolar tetrasodium EDTA as before. Then, add 200,000 mitomycin C treated 3T3 J2 NHP cells per well. The 3T3 J2 NHP cells are feeder cells that are neomycin, hygromycin, and puramycin resistant, which is required for the selection procedure. For selection, Culture the cells under 0.2 mg per milliliter of geneticin or G418 for an additional 6 days. Renew fresh G418 containing keratinocyte medium plus EGF every 2 days. Surviving epithelial stem cells will be immortalized stem cells. In this bright field image, the epithelial stem cells from skin form tight epithelial colonies designated by the E when cultured in keratinocyte medium with a feeder layer of cells designated by the F. Shown here are hair follicle explants that give rise to epithelial outgrowths. The telogen bulge region, designated by the T, is attached to the dish and surrounded by the epithelial cell colony along with feeder cells. Stem cell colonies in culture maintain expression of epithelial markers such as cytokeratin-15, shown here in green, and maintain pluripotency. When differentiated along the hair follicle lineage, skin epithelial stem cells express K6HF, a hair follicle marker. Additionally, the cells can be cultured on de-epidermalized dermis or other matrices at the air-liquid interface and will form a stratified epidermis with a cornified layer, granular layer, and spinous layer. And finally, oil-red positive globules can be seen from stem cells induced along the sebaceous lineage. Following this procedure, stem cell assays for self-renewal, proliferation, cell migration, adhesion, and differentiation can be performed to answer additional questions about genes involved in maintaining the stem cell phenotype.